is we don't care for our young people. Common Core, you discussed that earlier. If they need janitors, you're going to be educated to the level of a janitor. Mm -hmm. Free market has gone out the window. Free market economics is an extremely powerful thing. I tell you, there's no. I could sit here for the next six hours, and you could fire examples of, of, me of things that could go wrong in the business or the environmental field, and I'll show you a free market solution to it. Because yeah. it really does cleanse itself. And if you want land preservation, you darn well have to have the hearts of the people in your town. That's what you need. We don't need the stakeholders coming in elusively and quickly and getting signatures from our selectmen. Right? When I said that this stuff is paper thin, I meant it. This forest legacy, when they came in and tried to say, oh, this is an emergency, we've got to jump on board, it's only extra money. This ain't going to cost you anything, they told where. No, it's just going to allow certain people in town who want to take advantage of this grant to preserve their land in perpetuity. It was the exact same thing as the standard land trust, only this is a federal level, or actually international level, land trust. So when this Montreal group created the language for how we're going to measure our global forest, they put it out on their website for review. All right, this is the whole Northeast, all the states of the Northeast. 120 people reviewed this. 24% were NGOs and public-private partners. 48% state agencies. 12% were federal agencies. Other 12% and 4% in academia. And what this translates to, and they further condensed it over here, where the partners, uh, the public-private partners and the stakeholders represented 67 of those votes. 50 came from uh, the actual Northeast uh, Partnership Force Partnership, their own organization reviewed their own thing, and they, here's the green here. And this is three people that came out as unidentified. And when you go down and read what an unidentified respondent is, they still could be an NGO or an employee of the very organization that created this thing. Where else do I see that? I see that right now. Uh, last week I was at a meeting for our open space. Our town manager um, took this over. Um, my department's in the process of being hijacked by a green town manager. And um, he brought this whole thing to the Regional Planning Commission. They facilitated for us. And they put out a survey, and I told you how those go. Well, they opened the survey up to the entire world. Anyone on the internet could have taken the survey for where's open space plan. <laughs> and uh, Anne, I forget her last name, from uh, the Regional Planning Commission, emailed back when the deadline of the, the survey came around. We only had like 21 responses or something crazy like that. And uh, we got to put this out again and we got to get some more, some more input. And they tried to pump it out again. And of course, all the land trust and activists tried to get it out to their group. And um, long story short, I took the total population aware. I assume every single person that responded to that survey was a resident or a taxpayer aware and came up with a number of 0.02% of the population chimed in on what is going to be our open space plan. All those things that I predicted, I looked at my crystal ball and I said, you know what, Ann Capra, after wasting your, month, your, your time for three months, is going to come in, she's going to recommend CPA. She's going to recommend a visual corridor. She's going to recommend a water sustainability district, blight and redevelopment. You know what? Uh, how a planner uses blight and redevelopment? They'll come in, they'll convince your town you got blight and drug addicts. Oh, that's a terrible thing. Let's put a redevelopment zone over that. Terrific. Well, you're now you've tied those people uh, to eminent domain for 12 years when you've done that and put that zone over them, and. You might even get the voters to say that, you know what, this is a no-build zone or whatever. We're going to limit. Sprawl, that's, we'll use that one. We've all heard of sprawl. That's going to show up in your town if it hasn't already. Let's put a sprawl boundary. 
And they'll go out and watch how this logic, if you just take an extra second and look at it, reverses itself. We want to stop this evil sprawl. Here's the evil sprawl. If we put this boundary around it, no more development in city, urban-like conditions are going to go beyond here. You can get everyone in the countryside all riled up and let them know how this is going to be a great thing for you. Your crime's going to go down. You won't have, you know, urbanization of your area. And they'll put this boundary around it. From a property rights perspective, what have they done? Well, they've limited the value. No, where'd all the development rights go? Right here. Inside that little circle. All these people that wanted to stop the evil sprawl wiped out their own development rights. It's they that can't develop because it's got to be developed outside of this to be urbanized and for that sprawl to take place. Happens that quick. I don't understand that. No, and when you get the press releases bombarding us from the regional planners from those duped on your public boards. And land trusts, I'm not going to just pick on them, there's other agencies and nonprofits out there. Like I said, they're the hub for land preservation. You have these other development agencies and revitalization committees that are starting to form for all your smart growth type stuff. All right. Do they have any kind of uh, um, plan on use of this open space or it's just going to be open space? Two things. There's plenty of instances where they've secured this land in the name of open space and then turn around and sold it to private developers okay. to further one of their master plan agenda items. Okay. Yeah. Um, overall, because this underpins the whole thing, mm -hmm. it's economic control. Mm -hmm. They're spreading the wealth from this nation somewhere else by killing the, the industrial potential here in Massachusetts, or here. It's all to live in cities again, anyway. Yes. That's what smart growth is. Sustainable development works in the countryside to tie up property and limit development. And they're going to create poor people because farmers and other people work and have businesses in the countryside and they will go under as prices go up. Well, they've already created poor people. Yeah, and now they're building smart growth living cubicles for them to go to. And the rest of us who are productive will be able to sustain them most efficiently, like cattle. 